Here we can see some graphs of charging and discharging a capacitor. So on the left, we have a voltage versus time curve, and we can see that it takes a little bit of time for the voltage to come up. And on the right, it also takes a little bit of time for that voltage to dissipate or come back down. Let's go back to this active figure and I will reset it. And when we close the switch, it takes some time for these electrons to accumulate here and produce the negative charge on this plate. And the thing that might not be immediately clear is that electricity itself, which is electric charge, moves very, very fast. It moves at a, a very high fraction of the speed of light. Uh, it's almost instantaneous. But electrons themselves, they drift or they kind of bump along in this anti-clockwise direction. And for electrons themselves, they move very slowly. Let's reset that. For electrons themselves, they move very slowly. So there is a time delay for the electrons to build up on this plate. This time delay can be modeled with an exponential equation. So these curves may look a little bit familiar, although not necessarily how they're oriented, as an exponential graph. And so here on the left for charging, we can say that the voltage for charging is equivalent to this value epsilon. And then we have one subtract the exponential and it's going to be minus T over tau. Where T is in seconds and tau is my time constant. and is equivalent, so tau is the time constant, is equivalent to just resistance times charge. So as I follow on the curve here, when the switch is closed, I don't have any voltage yet that is accumulated in the capacitor. After one unit of tau, or after one unit of time constant, I have 63% of the full value. After two units, I have a little bit more, after three, a little bit more, and I'm approaching this red line, which is an asymptote. So recall the exponential equation is has an asymptote, and we can also see it here on the discharge at time zero, we have voltage V naught, and then it decreases exponentially, and it approaches zero. This discharge has a similar equation. We can say that we start at V naught, and then it's just E to the minus T over tau. We won't be going into a lot of the details of this equation. You can investigate that yourself. So just before we move on to solve for this point 632, what we can say here is VC, and then we're going to solve, we can say that epsilon is just one. And then I'm going to have 1 minus E, and I'm going to sub in for tau, I'm just going to sub in T. I'm going to say what happens at time T. So this is to the minus 1. And you can do this calculation. So E to the minus 1, that's just 1 over E. Uh, and this comes out to 0 0.632. And then if I didn't have 1 in here, I could just keep I didn't have one in here. Let's write it in a different color. I could just keep that in my equation. So that would be like 0.632 of whatever that peak or that max voltage is, or 63% of the peak. Uh, and so the after about four time constants, we're at 99% of the peak. And similarly on discharge, after about four we are almost at zero, so there's no charge left in that capacitor. Let's have a look at charge and discharge in terms of the circuit. 
So on the left here, if I follow where the switch is, my switch can move from point A to point B, and that represents the picture on the right. So on the left here, point B never gets activated. So what happens here? Charge comes from positive, builds on the capacitor plate through the resistor. And so eventually the capacitor plate will get saturated after a few of those tau time units. And we'll see here. So we have current going this way and we have electrons going anti-clockwise and building up on the capacitor. So now let's move to the discharge. So I have negative this way, follow it. So this plate will be some negative value and I don't know what it is, but that's okay. And the other plate will be positive. But the source is not included in this circuit, right? So when I close and switch to point B, what I've got here is, remember I have a pool of electrons on the right-hand plate, and I don't have many electrons on the left-hand plate. So what's going to happen here is that the electrons are going to reverse direction. So electrons are going to come this way, and that means that current, which is the direction we're used to following, is going to come in this direction. And so current will come across R in the up direction, and electrons will be drifting down. So let's have a look at these two circuits as an active figure. So I'm going to close the switch. And what's happening right now is that the charge here is building up on the capacitor. And after a short period of time, it's going to be maximized. And now in this figure, we're going to discharge. So we've got a charged capacitor and we're going to discharge. So when I close the switch, we started with this peak charge and now it's decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. We just hit our single time unit, decreasing down to zero. And we can see the current across the resistor and we can also track the related current. So the current also doesn't remain constant, right? If charge doesn't remain constant, current also does not remain constant. So let's have a look at this one again. Let's decrease the resistance and close the switch. So we have this exponential curve here approaching an asymptote and we can see the current on the circuit coming around here. This is clockwise. And so the electrons are going to be going opposite direction into the capacitor.